So let's get right into it with the four types of ball motion. Uh, most of you guys kind of know what these are, but basically the four types of ball motion are a way to classify all bowling balls. There's a little more than 150 bowling balls that, it, that have been made just this year alone, and it makes it very hard to know what types uh, of ball motion you're going to be able to get from all these different bowling balls. So what we did was we essentially took all the information that we could from the manufacturer, cover stock, finish, RG, core type, and the intent from the manufacturer, and we boiled that down into a bowling ball that's going to fit into one of these four shapes. So let me show you uh, kind of what the four shapes look like. This is kind of a graphical, which is kind of which is obviously exaggerated, but we're going to show you some actual footage of how, what they look like. So this is traction. The ball hooks kind of early. Watch where it exits the pin deck. It's going to exit the pin deck over the eight pin spot. So you'll see that again. The ball begins to make that roll. When it makes the roll, it begins pretty much to go forward. So right there, it's going to make a hook. It's going to hook and then it goes pretty straight. And that really is a is a motion that can be used, especially when you're on. Um, heavier oil patterns or need your ball to really control the back end. Continuation is a lot different, obviously. That ball, um, once it makes the move, it continues all the way through the pins, and you're going to be able to watch that ball split the 8-9. So you can see it gets about right there, and then when it makes that move, that move will be continuous all the way through the pins. That's the most common ball motion. Then we'll go to the most fun one, which is angular. Uh, the ball gets way, way, way out there, makes a super hard turn to the right, and actually runs over the 9-pin. So that's the one everybody likes to see. Um, obviously, there's times when that's advantageous. And there's also times when that isn't advantageous. You'll see from that spot there, the ball will go sideways. Um, he said the slide's cut off a little bit. I'm not seeing that on yours at all. So anyway, uh, and straight, obviously, the ball goes fairly straight, like you would expect. So uh, that's what they look like. And the reason why they're so important is because it allows you to classify bowling balls and break them down, right? Okay, we've got a, a chart, obviously, uh, that you guys will be able to access. It actually uh, goes to uh, Bowling for Less. Bowling for Less allows you to um, be able to see all the bowling balls that exist. So we'll click the chart, which will take us back over to Bowling for Less. Bowling for Less has the chart, and all the balls that exist are going to be on here with their ball motions. So... Uh, we've been doing this for probably about a year and a half, maybe two years most. You can um, scroll down and find your bowling ball. You can search for your bowling ball, um, and you can find out what motion it is if you don't know. If it's obviously one of those bowling balls that's very, very old or is not on the list, you can always email uh, help at ctdbowling.com, and we'll get you information on where that bowling ball would fit and what category it would go into. All right, so we'll go back here. Uh, we used to, and we still do, a lot of times take new releases and put them in this kind of format to make it a little bit easier. The problem is there are so many new releases now, we can't fit all the pictures on a chart and make it make sense. So this happened to be one from last year that we did, and which is why we just said go to the website, check out. Uh, you can search on the website your bowling balls and then find out which ball motions will fit for you. This is kind of an interesting slide. Some have seen it, some haven't seen it. Basically, what we did, we took all of the, the four major ball companies, Brunswick, uh, Storm, Motive, and then EBI, and we said, what do their cover stocks typically do? Where are their strong suits? Um, that's a lot of data over a lot of different um, people, uh, over a lot of different situations, over a lot of different um, uh, tournaments. And you can, this isn't necessarily all that radically different than what you may already know. But essentially what it shows you is to the left you can see the traction, in the middle you see continuous, and on the right you see angular. And what we're showing you is, effectively, if you look at the companies, just from a cover stock standpoint, this is where they are their best. The Brunswick Deviate Radical family tends to be best in that traction to continuous category. The EBI family is more toward that traction type continuous, or, but more toward the continuous side. Motive's a little more continuous, leaning more toward angular, and then Storm is more angular. Now, the reason why we do this is because it's a way for you as a consumer to have a much better understanding of making sure that you can maximize your performance. This doesn't take into effect core or surface. This is purely just their inherent cover stocks. Now that also doesn't mean that, as an example, Brunswick doesn't make good angular balls. Brunswick does. Doesn't mean that Storm doesn't make good traction balls. Storm does. The difference is, is this is where they tend to have their home runs. When these companies tend to have home run products, they tend to be in these categories. And that's one of the big reasons why I wanted to put this slide up here. And it's also one of the reasons why I wanted to tell you, if you are not staffed by a company, 
company or you are not being paid for by a company, it's definitely to your advantage to have a little bit of every company. If you need bowling balls that back in a whole lot, you should have a couple storm balls. You need bowling balls that pick up when the lanes have a lot of heavy oil on them, you need a couple Brunswick balls. And then obviously the balls in the middle are the balls in the middle too. So essentially what I'm trying to show you here is it's very, very important, unless you are being paid uh, for, by a ball company, to really have a bunch of different cover stocks. And that really means having different companies in your arsenal. So to build you the best possible arsenal, just from a cover stock standpoint, it's to your best advantage to be able to diversify and not stick to any one company. I can tell you, I was with one company for 14 years, and now I have all four companies because I know that it's more advantageous to have more than it is just to be locked into one. And just because they make 20, 30, or 40, or 50 balls, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that uh, and they're going to cover the range, they're going to have traction, continuous, and angular, but you're still going to be a little bit further ahead if you can diversify with companies. Here's a kind of an interesting uh, play on that too that will help you get a little bit more of an understanding. So what I did was I kind of broke this down a little bit with some examples that may make some sense. So basically um, one way to look at it or another way to look at the four types of ball motion when it comes to these cover stocks and companies is Brunswick tends to have speed dominant players have the most success with their brand. And the example that I used was Sean Rash. Sean Rash is a definitely uh, a speed dominant high rev player. Um, and because of that, I believe that that's part of the reason. Obviously, he's a phenomenal talent, but he, that's part of the reason why he matches up so well with the Brunswick equipment. From the EBI camp, it's more of that match speed, match rev rate. I use Jacob Butcher as the example because he's obviously the star over there. Um, and Jacob is that. You know, he's, his ball speed to his rev rate is fairly matched, even though he's on the left side of the lane. Um, but then as you begin to move toward uh, motive, you begin to see their star players being more rev dominant. So rev dominant with motive is EJ Tackett. And then obviously with Belmo, it's uh, or Storm, it's with Belmo. And what I'm really trying to, to get across here is that it doesn't mean that you can't be a different style of player, right? And to be locked into a company. But what it means is, is these are good examples of people that have had a lot of success with a particular company. And when you look at the characteristics of those cover stocks, it also kind of matches up to them too. So the last example I wanted to give you, and this is kind of, this is to me is very topical because I've had conversations with Ryan Simonelli myself, is Ryan Simonelli as a player is speed dominant. High rev, but speed dominant. He initially was with Brunswick. When he was with Brunswick, he was winning titles. He won six or seven really fast with Brunswick. He then switched, went to Motive, struggled for a bit, um, and now he's a free agent. Uh, he went right back uh, kind of to Brunswick really, really relatively quickly right after the becoming a free agent and free agent and won again immediately. So my point I'm trying to make here is that there are lots of examples like this. I just happen to use this one example, but there are a lot of examples where if you are a particular type of player, then you may match up better to a particular type of company's equipment. And if you do that, once again, it's just another thing to give you a little bit of an advantage uh, to help you become uh, your best when it comes to matching up with equipment. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. That slide, uh, they didn't get to see over in Finland, by the way. I did that this, uh, this week. So uh, just kind of to summarize what we just talked about there, obviously every ball is designed to do something and we, break it down, we broke it down into four different motions. And it's important that you have all four motions and it's important that you understand the cover stock expertise by company because it will allow you to make yourself have the most diverse possible um, arsenal that you can build.